Hi everyone, my name is Ying Tao. I'm excited to share our recent work on Next Location Recommendation that achieves a state-of-the-art performance. I work on this research with Qiang Liu from Chinese Academy of Sciences and uh, Zhao Chen Liu from Renmin University of China. So we know that many prior works have put forward the intuition that users tend to visit locations in several areas. In the exemplified figure in the left, the user check-ins can be divided into three groups, and each group contains multiple spatially adjacent locations. Well, this assumption is explainable as many people often buy uh, groceries, uh, drink coffee, eat, and do exercise nearby their neighborhoods or their workplaces. So it is natural that we divide locations into different areas or grids based on spatial distances. However, according to the visualization of user trajectory in real-world datasets, such as Foursquare, we find that most user check-ins are spatially sparse instead of spatially centered, and the visiting sequence is fairly regulated. This could be due to the sparsity of checking data. We also notice that the visiting frequency also varies from location to location, which is rarely discussed in prior works. The adjacency assumption does not apply to sparse and irregulated trajectories, but we can still use the spatial temporal effect within the trajectory to discover the correlation between different visits. In particular, this puts forward an interest in how to capture the spatial temporal correlation between non-adjacent locations and non-consecutive visits. Our main contribution in this work is to innovate the architecture that improves the spatial temporal representation and reflects the visiting frequency. A trajectory example is shown in the left figure. The user goes to the workplace on weekends, goes shopping on Monday, and goes to nearby restaurants to eat at each time. This scenario can be modeled by the adjacency assumption, but we have another perspective. For example, the the distances and the time intervals between restaurants themselves reflect the spatial temporal correlations. The exact spatial temporal correlation reflects the regularity of user preference, how far and when the user is going to make the next mobility. If this information is captured effectively, the model may perceive from the trajectory that these locations are relevant functionally. In this case, even without an adjacency assumption, the model may still aggregate relevant relocations with regardless of their spatial and temporal adjacency. This model is STEM. The architecture of STEM is shown in the right figure, and we will refer to it later. Let's quickly review the problem description of the POI recommendation. The trajectory data we have is a sequence with each element contains user ID, location ID, and exact time. We can use non-repeat sets to include all the users, locations, and time. Here, we construct two spatial temporal relation matrices. The trajectory spatial temporal relation matrix stores the relative spatial and temporal differences between any two visits within the trajectory. The candidate spatial temporal relation matrix stores the relative spatial and the temporal differences between each, visits, each visit in the trajectory and uh, each potential visit in the location set. The first matrix is used for representation learning and the second matrix is used for next location matching. Before feeding the data into the neural network, we inherit from previous works to use direct latent embedding. Then we propose a continuous spatial temporal embedding that reflects the continuity of spatial temporal effect. In the past, the separate embedding is a fixed dictionary that each embedded vector points to a different direction. So uh, this does not mean anything. However, if we set a unit embedding as the embedding of 100 meters and one hour, for example, we can directly represent one 
kilometer and uh, 10 hours as 10 times the unit embedding. So consequently, the actual spatial distances and the temporal intervals are still reflected within the embeddings. And uh, meanwhile, the computational complexity is reduced. So we can achieve dense and continuous at the same time. After the multimodal embedding layer, we use an attention aggregation layer to update the check-in embeddings within the trajectory. The point-to-point -point interaction within the trajectory allows the layer to assign more weights to relevant visits and update the representation with spatial temporal correlations. Unlike pairworks that divide a long trajectory into several short sequences, the computation here is to just to use the attention mask so that we can use the first visit to predict the second visit, and use the first and the second visit to predict the third visit, and so on. A similar mask can be applied to the spatial temporal matrix, which only allows the upper left matrix for computation. Afterwards, we use an attention matching layer for the final recalling of candidate locations. This layer allows the candidate locations to interact with each visit in the trajectory to compute its relevance and the probability as the next location. Here, the visiting frequency is reflected. If a user visits a location for multiple times, the attention matching layer will compute this location multiple times and add all of them to the final matching. It should be noted that each computed location is placed in different visits in the sequence, so it is not a direct multiplication. We also use a balanced sampler to compute the matching loss. Because cross-entropy loss uses all the negative samples, so it uh, optimizes the model to avoid wrong prediction rather than make the correct prediction. The binary cross-entropy loss, however, does not make an exploitive use of abandoned negative samples in the dataset. We tune the hyperparameter of negative samples to make a balanced sampling between the positive sample and the negative samples. In experiments, our model outperforms baselines in recall rates by 9 to 17 percent. The ablation analysis shows that the balanced sampler plays the most important role while both the spatial and temporal correlation learning can improve the recall rates. The stability study shows that then is generally insensitive to important hyperparameters, especially for smaller datasets such as NYC and TKY. For larger datasets such as Guavala, hyperparameter tuning is non-trivial. This is the final slide. Thank you for listening.